My name is Drew Adams. I'm a sophomore from Ponte Vedra, Florida, just outside of Jacksonville. At the beginning of my freshman year, I used the men's room. I used the men's room uninterrupted by my school. When they found out, they stopped letting me use the bathrooms that correspond with my gender identity. But I fought back. I had to file a complaint with the Office of Civil Rights and the Department of Education at the United States federal government. And I'm proud to say that they supported me. Despite that, my rights are still in limbo because the courts are considering cases challenging the United States Department of Education and Justice's interpretation of Title IX. I hope that my school district will implement an LGBTQ inclusive bathroom policy soon. For now, I wonder how long it will be before I can use the bathroom that aligns with my gender identity. Bathrooms aside, what I really wanna talk about or what I really want is to be safe in my school and to be treated with respect. That's why I'm grateful to have partners like Listen who encourage and support me. I'm also grateful for all the outspoken and successful leaders, LGBTQ leaders, who serve as role models for students like me. People like so many of you in the audience and like Secretary Fanning here beside me. When the President of the United States nominates an openly gay man to be the Secretary of the Army, it sends a message, a powerful message, to students like me. With hard work and determination, we can achieve anything. Drew, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for everything that you do with GLSEN uh, to make our schools safer. Uh, you and all the other students like you are really what's making a difference for us in this country, for all of us. So thank you very much. You did a great job tonight. I'm honored to help present tonight's Corporate Alley Award to First Data, a company that has done a company that has done so much to increase opportunities for all Americans, and in particular, to two groups of special importance to me, our LGBTQ community and veterans. First Data has eight employee affinity groups, including LGBTQ, military, women, black, and disability groups. They have They have been listed on Diversity Inc's 25 noteworthy companies in 2015 and 2016 and 2017. They have LGBTQ family-friendly policies like gender-neutral parental leave and have been recognized by the Human Rights Campaign Corporate Equality Index as a best place to work. And when the Georgia State Legislature First Data's home state considered an anti-LGBTQ foster care and adoption policy. The company publicly opposed it alongside state equality groups. For veterans, there is a company-wide military engagement strategy called First Data Salutes, which is dedicated to recruiting and supporting veteran employees and veteran-owned businesses. And their CEO, Frank Bisignano, who is here tonight to receive the award, lives these values personally and before he even came to First Data. He co-founded the 100,000 Jobs Mission while at J.P. Morgan Chase, an 11-company coalition created to hire 100,000 veterans by 2020. That coalition has grown to 170 firms and three years early has already doubled its goal by hiring almost 200,000 veterans. For this and so much more than we can list tonight, 
Glisten is proud to present this year's Corporate Ally Award to First Data. I'm struck by uh, being here and, uh, you know, I'm reflective of the past two days, and uh, I think they, they speak a lot about uh, what my prepared remarks would be about. Um, yesterday, uh, I was up at Syracuse University um, and uh, receiving uh, an honorary PhD, um, but of course, uh, the other gentleman receiving an honorary PhD was uh, Vernon Jordan. And uh, Vernon Jordan um, talked about a life that is much different today than the life he started at. And uh, he reminded everyone of all the things he had seen and gone through and with it all the change that has actually made this country a better place. But if you went back to where he started to where he is today, uh, they're much different, different worlds. Uh, and, you know, I won't go into chapter and verse, uh, partially uh, because as one of my daughters uh, had texted me when it was over, he said, did he read a novel up there? Um, and uh, this morning or sometime during the course of today, First Data was awarded by the Military Times uh, number one employer for vets and place for veteran family members to work. So I, I, I roll in here this evening surrounded by leaders and talent and dedication and God bless you, Eliza, and what you've done here, you know. Uh, and, and whether I am up at Syracuse or uh, here or hearing about the Military Times, I'm always reflective that uh, I may be the CEO and chairman and the one whose name gets called up at a day like this, but it's a platform of great people within First Data. Uh, here you have, you have one of the great leaders in Cindy Armine Klein who... <laughs> who I, I, I view as a sister of mine. We were at City together, and that's where she started on this journey with you all, and then J.P. Morgan, and uh, when she came to First Data with myself, and we'd been through all those journeys together as some other partners who are in this room, Christine Larson and Chris Foskett, um, we created unity. Uh, and it was one of the things I was so darn proud of that I put in the press release of First Data's uh, release that we hired Cindy. And I, I, I tell you that because there was no inclusion program in this company in 2013. Diversity had no meaning, inclusion had no meaning, LGBT, couldn't be spelt, um, and it's just true. It's just true, and I'm so darn proud of all the people here, all the leaders here, not just at First Data, but in this room. You know, to be here with Eric, who has done so much for this country, and has done so much for people in general, I think it's, it's an incredible situation. And I do want you to think and, and think about where Vern Jordan started and where he is today. 
and all the progress you've made in the 15 years that uh, Eliza has been leading for this group. And we stand in Cipriani's today with so much more to do, so much more to do, but a platform and an opportunity um, to just make it right. And, and I think a CEO has a platform. I think many leaders of companies have platforms. And one of the things I love, we have our head of human resources here. We have our, our group leaders here. And it's about how do we have a better place? And what you've created is something that's making it better. And if each day we could just make progress on the topic, if each day the environment is safer, if, if students, youth, who are growing can benefit more from safety, can benefit from opportunity. See, I have some prepared remarks, but I ain't reading any of what the PR department wrote for me. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. And so, like, I think, like, we got a great opportunity. We got a great opportunity. You guys have 15 years, and I think every year after this will be exponential progress relative to what we've done. And I think when, when I was asked to write the letter to, to uh, Georgia about how he felt about it, I didn't think there was a question in my mind about what was right. So leadership's about doing the right thing. Running companies are about platforms to do good. Glisten is about doing something that wasn't done before, but it's about the most prized possession this country has, students. Students. So, you know, I, I teased Christine Larson and I said, I'm going to talk about Vern Jordan and, and, and I meant it. And she teased me and she said, you're going to talk to him about growing up in Brooklyn because he talked about growing up in uh, segregated uh, Georgia at the time. But it is about that. It's about everybody's created equal and everybody can pursue their safest zone. And we, through GLSEN and through the great leadership here, and it is a great country in many ways where, you know, Eric can be standing here. Uh, God bless Joe Biden and the leadership that the Bidens have always provided to this country. It is about that advancement. And, and it's easy to turn on the news and see such horrible things still occurring. It's easy to see it, but nobody should step back from the journey we're on. Plus, we're gonna win at every day, at every corner, to embrace and include and take the youth and bring them along. And that generation, those people I've seen come up here, they will be leading. Once somebody here will be a CEO and embracing, like I was a C, like I'm a CEO today and grew up in a neighborhood where there was every form of difference. And, and you'll learn inclusion one by one. You are role models, each one of you. What has occurred here, uh, and I do say, you know, 15 years, I can remember Cindy working on this a long time ago, and it wasn't what it is today, right? It is, it is bigger, it is bolder, it is stronger, and it only began. And I feel that uh, our company is just three years young in our inclusion journey, right? We had nothing 
when we started, except people devoted to the cause. And I'm happy on any given day for us to work on anything with each and every one of you to build a better workplace for everyone and to build a better opportunity for our students and youths so they can feel comfortable and safe and feel the ability to identify themselves as they are most comfortable. So I, I think... I think in closing, the, whatever I'm up here receiving is every person out here's award. It's, it's, we are just a representation of each and every one of you, and I'm so darn grateful for what each and every one of you do, because it helps our company, and we want to help each and every one of you. Thank you very much.